In FeatureCam 2014 R3, a new capability has been added to allow you to replace the curves of features pasted from the part library. With this simple new enhancement, you can now replace the boundary curve of a two-axis feature with one of your own choosing, resulting in a smoother process for custom feature creation. In this example, you can see we've got part of an aero structure with a number of pockets already placed inside. If we look at the part view, you can see we've got a face operation, boss operation, and then the two pockets. If we open any one of these pockets, we can see that we've made a number of changes to the operations. So for example, we have a rough, a semi-finish, and a finish operation. If we go to the strategy page, we can see in this case we've chosen to use the NT spiral for both the roughing and the finishing operations. And if we go to either of these operations, for example into the roughing, and look at the milling tab, in this case I can see I've set high-speed machining parameters as well. So I've made a number of changes and I wish to replicate these changes in another component. If I go ahead and just play 3D simulation just to verify the component so far. So you can see the various pockets like so. So what I wish to do is I wish to commit these to the part library itself. So I can access the part library either via the construct menu or I can do it via the global settings in the part view just by double clicking on part library. In this case I wish to create a new library. I'm going to select new library and in this case I'm going to put it on my C drive and a temporary area and a folder called part library. FeatureCam will ask do I wish to create a 32 or 64 bit part library. In this case I'm using a 64 bit system so I'm going to select 64 bit. Once I've created my part library, I can accept and start adding the features. So in this case we have two pockets that we wish to add. I'm going to go back into my part library, select the first pocket, and in this case I'm going to put it into the folder and say add selected, and say OK. That is now stored in the part library for future use. I can repeat this process for the second pocket, in this case selecting the 23mm pocket, and again adding into that folder. I can now say OK, and both those features are committed. Let's go down to the browser. In this case you'll see there are two example part files, so we can click on the second image to load the second example. In this case you can see the rest of the aero structure, so the part we've just machined is the part that slots into this recess. So what we want to do is we want to create the rest of those pocket operations, replicating all the same strategies that we used in the previous part. If we go to the part view, you can see there's only a facing operation and we have all the curves pre-created ready to go. What I want to do now is I want to bring in those uh, part library items. To do this, I'm going to go to the part library. I'm going to select the pocket aero structure. Now in this case, I can choose paste. Just to verify or to highlight, if I say paste the objects into the current setup and say finish, those pockets appear like so. I'm going to delete this, I just wanted to show that those pockets are available. I'm going to delete the two curves that we use for those pockets. So what we wish to do is we want to use the new option which allows us to paste items from the part library but use different curves to define the boundaries. I go back to my part library and select the 12mm pocket. Again I'm going to say paste, but you'll see there's a fourth new option that allows us to paste the clipboard contents into the current setup using an existing curve in the part document as its profile curve. I'm going to choose next. I get a new list that allows me to indicate which of the curves I wish to select. In this case, it's a 12mm pocket, so I'm going to select all of the pockets that have a 12mm next to them. I can either do this individually, or if I use the control click and go ahead and select all of the 12s, and I can do a quick press of the spacebar to choose those 12mm pockets and say next. I get a preview of the pockets. I can also move the location but in this case the pockets are correctly located. So I can say finish and say OK. I now get my 12mm pockets in my file like so. Next thing I want to do is create the 23mm pockets. So again back into my part library, select the error structure 23 paste and again choose the new option and go through each 
of these items that have 23 in the title and again press spacebar and say next. Again we can say finish and that generates those 23 millimeter pockets. The final pockets are slightly deeper. If we go and measure the vertical distance from here to here, just rotate the view around, we can see we've got a distance of 35 millimeters. So I'm going to paste those same pockets and just make a change to the feature afterwards. So let's go back to our part library, into our aero structure, and again I'm going to say paste, choose next. In this case I'm going to select everything that's 35, so we can go and use the control click, select all the 35 millimeter pockets, and again spacebar, say next, and say finish. I can then rename this. In this case, I'm going to set this to be 35 and say OK. And then edit the depth and set that to be 35 and say OK. Final thing to do is just to change to my full tools crib and then go ahead and do a 3D simulation and calculate the tool paths to complete our part. So this shows that the process of pasting features from the part library using curves we have saved in our part makes for a much smoother process to machine our parts.